Welcome back to Mixed Cribs and Kitties Hand Pick Quarantine Pretties Pride Edition. Say that three times fast. Alright, if you are new to this channel, my name is Crimson Kitty. I am a drag queen. I am a crafter. I make things because I'm broke and I want to look cute. On today's video, what we're going to be doing is making fabulous rainbow pride color infused fascinators made out of ribbon. Now, I was actually really stumped. I said, what am I going to make for my crowd today for my lovely audience? And I decided I needed my crafting fix. We went to Michael's. They had the elusive 50% off coupons. You know what? I'm game. I ended up finding some ribbon and some other stuff that I got for super cheap and that inspired today's episode. Now you may wonder, why is a rainbow associated with gay rights? Let's talk about it. In 1978, the rainbow pride flag was designed by American artist and gay rights activist Gilbert Baker. His flag became known as the symbol for LGBTQIA plus rights in America as we know it. In 2015, the Museum of Modern Art officially recognized Gilbert Baker's design just as important as the recycling symbol. Now, if you look at the flag today, you'll notice that there are a lot of differences from the original design. We now have blue, pink, black, and brown representing transgender and queer black voices. The colors on the rainbow flag reflect the diversity of the LGBTQIA plus community. When Baker raised the first rainbow flags at San Francisco Pride on June 25th, 1978, it compromised eight symbolic colors. Hot pink, which stood for sex. Red, which stood for life. Orange, which stood for healing. Yellow, which stood for sunlight. Green, which stood for nature. Turquoise, which stood for magic and art. Indigo, which stood for serenity. And violet, which stood for spirit. Now that we've delved into why the rainbow flag is so important to our gay and lesbian and transgender and bi and pansexual and aromantic and asexual and everybody under this gorgeous rainbow, we're gonna begin to create a gorgeous, cute and cheap look for your pride celebrations. Pressing first, you're gonna get this. You're gonna throw this out. You're gonna get all your colors. We have enough things that are white. Throw that away. One thing I failed to mention before is you're gonna need a scissor. That is how we're gonna curl them and make them pretty. So I'm just gonna do a little snip and a snip and a snip. All right, so have all your colors. Uh, our glue gun is heating up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a little bit of our ribbon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of just eyeball it. Um, it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be short. It just all depends on how much you want it. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna do a snip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as the base to cut all the rest of the ribbon. Now, the best part is you can keep this, do not throw it out, is you could slip this right back in. It might be messy, but at least you have a container that you can put this back into and keep that nice and organized. All right, so we have our pieces. They're gorgeous, they're beautiful. This is our next step. We um, have all our ribbon created. I have two sets of ribbon that I eyeballed. I tried to curl them and then realized, wait a minute, this is the wrong ribbon. You can't curl it. It doesn't matter. We're gonna change our direction. And one thing about me is I'm a crafter on the fly. So if something doesn't work, I will think of something really, really quickly and make it work. Hashtag, make it work. What we're gonna do is, because this has a felt backing, this is going to make the process so much easier. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this and you're gonna glue this onto this. The trick is, you can't just glue this on because what it's gonna do is it's gonna glue both sides together. So how we're gonna get by this is we can actually use a few ways. We can use the cardboard that this came in to separate this so we can just glue this down. You can use the silicone of this or if you 
you have like baking sheet, that's the best way. Just to make it easier, use what you already have that already came with the packaging. I'm just gonna clip it like so, and it's gonna be a little sticky when uh, we open it, but it'll be fine. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna do our chesty glue gun, and we're gonna just make a nice, generous moment. And then we're gonna take this, it doesn't matter which side, they're actually on both sides, they're very equal and generous. And now we're gonna actually just place this there. And this is gonna be the barrier so that this doesn't get stuck. I've learned that lesson the hard way, just do it this way. Because this is not a silicone, she's a little bit more tricky. Next, I'm gonna show you the silicone method because I wanna show you how much easier it is. I'm gonna put that here again. All right, make it very generous. You wanna make sure this baby stays. And then you're gonna just lay this flat, wait for it to dry, and you're gonna notice that this peels off a lot easier. All right, so it's just about dry. Wait about 30 seconds, and... Voila! So what we did was we made this cute little ponytail, which is perfect for uh, little kids and anybody who just wants a quick little fix. And it's super simple to make. It only took me about 10 minutes. I'm probably gonna cut these short, uh, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And let's go into how we're gonna make this. I cut two of every single color. That's what we use. It creates a cute little fairy tale like pony quality. I am gonna start by taking my first one and what I do is I fold this before gluing so it has a nicer seam. So I'm gonna just go put a little dot here and press her down. It will have a little pop over here and that's okay because once this is dry, you just put a little one on there. We're gonna work in a circular pattern and you wanna be a little bit careful uh, with your glue. I'm not, so we're just gonna make this work and I'm gonna go ahead and do one of those fasty things to expedite this process. So I won't be talking that much until we get to the next step. Okay, so we just have the first one. I'm gonna put uh, the last one on. We are dealing with seven colors. So this is the part where we're just gonna alternate the other ones because I want a nice little balance. So I'm gonna put the black one here. And it's just a nice added touch. And you know, you wanna make sure everyone's represented in the rainbow and everyone should. The only color I am missing here is obviously brown and uh, pink. I probably in hindsight should have gotten the pink flower, but I love lavender, it's so pretty. We have one layer done, everything is pretty much drying. We're gonna alternate colors, so if like an orange is over here, I'm gonna put an orange here, but it's up to you. All right, so basically what you did is you worked your way around in a circle, you did the uh, main colors first, then alternated uh, the colors. It doesn't matter uh, which color you wanna choose, it could be the same color, three colors, that doesn't matter. So what matters next is you're gonna look at your clip. Ponytail should be going in the direction of the clip. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure that the ponytail goes this way so that when you're wearing it, it gives you a little bit of volume. And what I did was not entirely basket weaving, but similar. So I know that this is supposed to go here, kind of like hair, and it's I love to do this. I don't know, I, I like my projects. What I'm gonna do is take a few pieces here, and then I'm just gonna wrap it around. You should play around with it, you know? And that's where crafting should be. Sometimes it's not perfect. Sometimes it needs work, and that's fine. Now that I kind of got this into a nice moment, just wanna make sure everything here is neat. I'm gonna go ahead and hold this in place and glue her down. Play around with it. Confirm where you want it before you glue. Um, if this is what you have, I would suggest stopping here. I'm gonna go ahead and just do some bonus extra gorgeousness to this and we'll be right back. All right, so I just found some old rhinestones I had lying around and I had one of those pink so I could finally add the pink to it. And I wanna show you this. That's so pretty. This is a perfect craft to do with your kids. This is a perfect craft to do with youth and anybody can do it. 
All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. This was not what I planned. I had planned a whole curled ribbon, curly, fluffy fantasy, and you know what, Miss Mercury Retrograde was like, no, you're gonna work for your craft today. And let me tell you, I actually love these. Now, they probably don't go as well with this wig in particular, but I am super excited, and I think I wanna make more of these um, in different colors and styles and all sorts of things. So, this is super easy. I love the addition of the rhinestones. I think it just makes it look just a little cuter and a little bit more professional because I am the worst person to use a glue gun and I'm messy. Anyway, if you like this tutorial, please like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be informed of all catastic, dragtastic, craftastic content. If you have any questions about anything I did in this tutorial, feel free to send me a line. My contact is in my about me. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, do you have uh, more ideas or ways that I could even elevate this? Leave a comment. Let me know how you feel, honey. Questions, comments, complaints, concerns, I can handle it all. Until next time, have an amazing pride, have an amazing weekend, and I will see you next week. Meow, 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 meow. Meow.